Hello, everybody. We're going to start in just, just a minute, give everybody else a chance to uh, come on in. <clears throat> while you're waiting, I'm going to change the slide up here. While you're, cha while you're waiting, um, I have a Jamboard here. And if you go to this Jamboard, you can uh, you can enter in your name uh, to see who's here. Let's see, and um, in in your category. So if you're a if you're currently teaching computer science, if you'd like to teach computer science, um, if you have an introductory computer science class in your at your school, um, you can <clears throat> enter that as well in the bottom left corner. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, good morning, uh, my name is Pauline White. I'm from Siena College and I teach in the computer science department. Um, I have been in computer science education for, uh, this is my 17th year here. Um, I started out as a software developer for GE, um, and then I have taught um, in uh, junior high and high school at Burnt Hills uh, Central School District for several years, and I'm teaching here at Siena College. Um, I teach with uh, a couple of colleagues of mine, Robin Flatland, Dr. Robin Flatland and Mr. Jim Matthews. Um, and together with a few other colleagues at the college, um, we have over uh, 40 years of working with high schools um, to bring computer science education into the classroom here. Um, and in the last 10 years, we've been supported by NSF grants to do that. So today I wanna talk to you about um, a course that I developed called um, called Discovering Computer Science. And in that course, um, I wanna to talk to you about some of the, some of the lessons learned here. <clears throat> so we're gonna um, talk about um, our research per, per, um, practitioner partnership and what that involves here. And then some of the lessons learned over the four years here and extend an invitation for you to join us here. So if you have questions as I'm going along, um, feel free to type those in the chat, and I'll try to uh, in, to answer those as we go along here. Okay. So again, if you want to add your, your information up there on the Jamboard at any time, um, there's a slide for questions. And there's also a slide on the Jamboard where if you want to leave your name and your email address uh, for more information, I'd be happy to reach out to you. Okay. So let's start here. So we have, as I said before, we've developed our program over the last 10 years. Uh, we've been supported by three NSF grants. Um, our current grant will be ending in December and we have another application in um, to continue funding. Um, the great thing about our program is at Siena College, the college itself has committed to supporting our program. Um, so the college has done some things to help us and we'll talk about those as we go along here. Um, we have professional development curriculum for uh, four different courses. So Discovering Computer Science is the course that we're going to talk about today. It's a high school level course um, that we introduced in 2019. Uh, and we've been developing that over the last four years. We have uh, a dual enrollment course called um, CSIS 110. It's an introductory course in multimedia with Python. And the thing about our dual enrollment course courses is that we encourage uh, teachers to offer these courses to all students. So students in the classroom can be taking the course for high school credit, but they could also be taking the course for college credit. And we uh, have students and teachers work together through the first quarter. And so at the end of the first quarter is when students would decide whether or not they wanna take the course for college credit. So they can get a feel for what the course is gonna be like. They can get some guidance from their teacher 
about whether or not they think that they would be um, successful in, in getting the college um, credit. Um, and they can just make that decision a little bit later in, when the course starts. Um, we have another dual enrollment course, 120 uh, Intro to Java Programming, which is roughly equivalent to the AP Computer Science A course. Um, there are two topics, recursion and um, inheritance, that we don't cover in our dual enrollment course. But our dual enrollment course does cover a lot more than the AP um, course. And we do have uh, a school district that's offering this course for both AP and Siena College credit. Um, so that's another option as well. And then this year we're piloting our CSIS 180 web design course. And all the dual enrollment courses, again, can be taken for high school credit um, or college credit here. We also offer tuition scholarships for in-service teachers who can take uh, CS courses with us towards certification. Um, and we've had a number of teachers do that. I should mention about our dual enrollment courses that students are taking these courses. Um, for a three credit course, it's $200 for tuition. For a four credit course, it's $250 for tuition. But if your student qualifies for free and reduced lunch, whether or not they take that free and reduced lunch, they can take the, those courses for free. The courses that we offer for in-service teachers um, to take with us, we offer those courses um, in the evenings so that teachers can join us and they join our classes remotely. Um, and then we work with them around their schedule uh, to do things like labs. Okay, let's move on here. We do also have a vibrant professional learning committee. We'll talk about that in a bit. So I want to talk just a second about what is in the Discovering CS course here. Um, again, it's a high school credit course for students in grades 9 through 12. We uh, write, I wrote the course so that there's no experience required here. Um, in New York State, you know computer science is an elective credit, um, but we have many school districts who are offering this course as a third year math credit. And then again, you can also offer it as a third year science credit. And again, that decision on third year math or science credit is up to your um, board of education to decide. So that's a local decision. This course is really built on creativity, self-expression, and collaboration. So creativity, self-expression, collaboration are um, foundational in helping us to bring students into the course, bring all students into the course, and help them feel like they are belonging into the, in that course here. We provide all course materials for our, um, our uh, discovering class here. Um, in the course materials has, um, you know, introductory activities, it has labs, projects, um, and other unplugged activities. Um, we also have some optional material in there that teachers can substitute or use in addition to what we provide. Um, and everything comes with a teacher's guide. And we are currently offering this course in 22 school districts. So over the four years, we started with six schools. Um, and we have grown now to 22 different school districts, which is amazing. It's a hands-on lab and project-based course. There are no quizzes or tests in this class. Um, we have three programming units. So we do a block-based unit, we have a web unit, and then we have a Python programming unit here. We also have um, what, we're, what we call unplugged CS fundamentals and special topics. And so that's another quarter of the course, and we'll talk about that a little bit. We do career exploration. Um, we really stress uh, the ability for students to express themselves as individuals through the labs and projects that they do. And for them to um, bring computer science into their community or to engage with their community in computer science. And we look at how is computer science impacting you as an individual, your community, and the society at large. We have two special projects. Um, the diversity project is a two, um, about a week and a half long project where students explore what diversity means, um, where we, can we find diversity in computing, um, how do we uh, see role models from um, different backgrounds in computer science, and really help students develop the idea that that yes, they belong in computer science too. Um, and then we have a laws, regulations, and special projects um, uh, uh, excuse me, a law a laws and regulations and special projects week-long 
um, project that students do, which is more of a debate format here. Um, throughout the course, we really emphasize um, reflective learning. So when students um, do labs or projects or some of the other activities in the course, um, they have a reflective piece at the end and students create a Google site. Um, and through their Google site, they are creating a portfolio of their work and reflecting on what they learned um, and how they're growing through the course. And really, it, it's really nice because um, then that Google site can be shared with um, other teachers. It can be shared with your administration, with parents, with students, and it becomes a really great tool um, for showing what's going on in the course here. And then, of course, we are striving to meet all New York State standards. Right now, this course meets about two thirds of the standards. And over the next um, two years, we're going to be uh, shifting this course so that it does meet all of the New York State standards for 9 through 12. Okay, so I just have some examples of student work. If you did download the or, or access the link for the project, or, or excuse me, for this presentation here, um, some of these links are clickable. And so you can open a, open a copy of student work. These are actual projects that students have submitted here. Um, and you can look at them and play with them. Um, just to give you an idea, this is from our block-based programming unit here. So one of the very first labs is a kaleidoscope lab um, and where students can learn how to um, work with multiple different sprites to create images here. Um, we have a polygons lab, so we're doing some geometry here. Um, we have a sound and animation lab, so if you did click on this and run this, um, it actually plays the theme song, the student programmed the theme song. Um, and did this drawing as the theme song plays here. Um, and then some of the culturally re uh, reflective work that students have done, um, it can be done as programming or it can be done in other ways as well. So also in this unit, um, we, do, we do other explorations. So for example, we in explore um, image coloring and we explore um, encryption in this unit here. Um, we have a Python programming unit. So in our Python programming unit, this is really focusing on um, problem solving uh, and learning to persevere through problems uh, and working in a text-based program. So we developed a short introductory um, Python, block-based Python to text-based transition. And so that's what you see this dancing star up here. That's a four, four weeks unit unit. And then we transfer into the more of the text-based programming here, um, where students are learning some text-based uh, Python, and they're doing some applications. So here, on for example, we have a unit conversion. And then this part three car shopping here, this is actually um, one of those Google site entries that students create, um, where after they have learned um, to do some calculations and ma mathematics in Python, um, they develop a, uh, an, a quote um, that compares buying two different cars and making a recommendation to a user. And they're doing that using the program that they wrote, which is really cool. Then we have the web unit here. In the web unit, students, again, get back to the very visual creative stuff here. Um, so again, these links are um, clickable here. Each of the units has um, at least one unit project in it, so a culminating project um, that brings together everything that they've learned. Um, and we do the web unit last um, because it's sort of the, the end of the year celebration of everything that you've learned. And it brings it actually brings together um, a lot of what they learn in block based and what they learn in web. Um, and they get to apply it here and be very um, expressive in what they've learned. OK. So if you want any more information about our dual enrollment courses, um, there is a presentation tomorrow, uh, 11.15 to 12.05, um, with myself and some of my colleagues, and also an um, administrator from Middletown High School uh, that has a really vibrant programming program um, that we've helped build. Um, or you can reach out and contact us, and I do have a contact information at the end of this presentation here. OK. So lessons learned over the last four years. So when I was thinking about what do I want to say in this presentation, um, I, I went to uh, a few things. One, you know, what have I learned as uh, the developer of this course? 
um, what have my teachers learned and taught me, um, what are the students saying, and then what is the district perspective here. So I um, reached out to my teachers and I said, if you were giving this presentation, what would you say? So a lot of that information is in here. So from a course development perspective, um, we know that students need an introductory CS course before they take a, a college level CS course. So in the um, keynote speech this morning, Leanne referenced you know, a foundational computer science class. Um, we were offering our dual enrollment courses long before we started offering this discovering computer science class. But the fact of the matter is that students, um, you know, they start they start math in kindergarten, they start science in kindergarten, English in kindergarten. Um, but right now in New York State, they're not starting computer science until maybe high school um, or college even. Um, and really when we when we have that model, you know, what we're seeing is that the the college ready students are the ones who are going to take those classes. But really, computer science is about, um, it's about citizenship. It's about um, just living in the world and understanding how, the, how our world works. And everybody should have the opportunity to take a computer science class. So we decided to develop this um, foundational computer science class here. Um, and we designed this class specifically so that it could be offered for all students. So we're offering it. Um, no experience required. We are building a lot of um, supports into the course for for students from all kinds of backgrounds and with all kinds of learning needs here. Um, we have 22 school districts. I have 27 teachers who are teaching with us. Um, almost all of those teachers had no computer science background before they started teaching, um, but they were enthusiastic. They wanted to bring this to their school district here. Um, and they were willing to learn alongside their students. Um, and we are giving them a lot of support and we're seeing that they're th thriving and their students are thriving as well. Um, a CS curriculum is never done. That's a super important lesson here. Um, you know, the, the CS and the tech field evolves rapidly here. Um, our elementary and our middle school students are starting to immerse themselves in CS sooner. So our courses at the high school level have to evolve. Um, and education research in computer science is, is really, really new, um, but it is producing more and more actionable findings about how to teach computer science effectively to all students. And so the curriculum needs to adapt over time. Um, and then, here, um, know, I wrote here, know your priorities, right? You can't tackle everything all at once if you're creating a program. So you have to kind of think about what order do I wanna do this? And really listening to the teachers and the students are, is super important. So in the first year of creating this, um, I was literally writing this curriculum as the school year was progressing. So I was just a couple of weeks ahead of the teachers um, here, but really the first year focused on foundational curriculum and these, this idea of citizenship, that computer science is all around us, it's in everything that we do, um, how we vote, the choices that we make uh, when we engage in computing um, really affects us, it affects our communities and our society. So that's where I started here. Um, but I was listening to my teachers um, as the year progressed about what worked and what didn't work and what was good and not so good. So in the second year, the focus really was on access to computer science um, and teacher input into the curriculum here. So our one of our NSF grant uh, that helped support the development of this program was really about broadening access to computer science. So getting computer science into more high schools here. Um, in this year, I had a Siena College student who's now teaching at Chatham High School, um, teaching computer science at Chatham. Uh, she helped go through the curriculum and bring in some universal um, design for learning practices into the curriculum and to make the the materials more accessible for more students here. Um, this is the year of COVID so we had to figure out how are we going to adapt this curriculum so that we can deliver it in a remote fashion here. So I had um, two Siena College students, um, the, the teacher from Chatham and another um, student teacher 
And then I had uh, three teachers who had taught Discovering Computer Science the first year. We worked together through the whole summer to change this curriculum over so that it could be delivered on a Chromebook. So the curriculum um, can be used completely on a Chromebook. All of the um, websites that we use, all the, the tools that we use are free. Um, and uh, we worked on how can we engage students in this kind of online environment here. And a lot of the work that we did there um, has carried over and made the curriculum better now that we are back in person, which is great. Um, every August, we have a four-day professional development session for teachers at um, Siena College, uh, and they come along with the dual enrollment teachers and we do some activities together and then we focus on professional development in this course here and in the second year we focused on you know the awareness of what is diversity what does it mean and how do we recruit uh, for diversity in our schools and how do we retain those students and we and when i say diversity in our schools i'm saying that the students in your computer science classroom should be a reflection of the population of students in your school building. So when I taught at Burnt Hills, um, Burnt Hills only has a 3% minority um, enrollment there. So diversity in my classroom looked like I want my goal is I want to have 50% females and 50% males, right? So diversity, what does diversity look like in your school district and trying to make that um, come alive in your classroom? Um, and then in the last two years, we've really talked about not just access to computer science, but equity, right? What does it look like in a computer science classroom? How do we um, help students who were, wouldn't traditionally be thought of as being part of a computer science classroom, being part of the computer science community? How do we make them feel welcome um, in our classroom? And how do we make them feel comfortable and uh, and feel like they are um, a part of our community, but that they that they can continue in computing here. And this really involved a lot of student feedback, teacher and administrative involvement as well. So again, in August, we focused on uh, equitable teaching strategies here, and then we have our current um, NFS proposal is to work with five model schools um, to talk about how we can develop this for all students here, okay? Um, and when we're working with those model schools, um, we, all five of the school districts have um, a Siena component, um, administration, guidance representation, and teacher representation. Um, and we're talking about how are we gonna develop um, and move towards adopting computer science for all students. <clears throat> Excuse me, so in these five model schools, um, one of them has committed to bringing computer science to all students um, in the next four years, and the other four um, have a goal of 60 to 70 percent over the next four years of students in their classes. Um, and what really can, came about this year is that in the in the discovering computer science, we adopted a set of core values. And so this is not just something that I developed, but I developed this along with our teachers. Um, so we foster a growth mindset for every student. We incorporate equity-based and culturally responsive teaching practices. We use inquiry-based learning, which is um, so important for engaging those, those non-traditional CS students. Um, we have communication and collaboration. Um, we, uh, we adjust the classroom space to meet the needs of underrepresented students rather than requiring the students to do the changing. So what that's getting at is, is um, we want to meet the needs of all of our students. We don't want students to feel like they can't be themselves in their classroom. They have to be someone else in order to fit in, right? So we're adjusting to welcome all students here. Um, we're making this sort of non-programming piece of the curriculum a large part of the curriculum. It's actually 25% of our curriculum here. And we see from research um, in interviews with our students that actually that's really engaging for them and a really important piece of belonging. Um, and then we have a public space where we can show off our student work, right? Students want to know that we're proud of what they're doing um, and, and we want to give them that opportunity here. 
Okay, so what did our teachers say? So Maureen at Mahanasan High School, she's been teaching with us actually. She's one of the teachers who's been with us the longest. I think she's been with us for about eight years. Um, she teaches at Mahanasan High School, in case you're not familiar. Mahanasan is a suburban high school. It has um, a, around 40 to 50 percent, I believe, um, uh, high need students um, in the district here. Um, and she, there's there's a lot of challenges here, but which her, what she says is huge. This is her words: huge student growth here, um, growth in confidence, growth in reading and following directions independently, and collaborative working with their peers and teachers. So Maureen is offering discovering computer science as um, as elective credit, but she also has students in the classroom who are taking this as a third year um, math credit, and then. That's so powerful. She says students who believe that they could not be successful are in their classrooms celebrating, like, look what I did, look what I did. Um, so exciting here. Um, they have pride in their work and their confidence to take the next class. So she has um, juniors who are taking Discovering Computer Science go on and take our dual enrollment course. Um, some of them take it for high school credit, some of them take it for college credit. And um, it's really, really exciting to see these students taking these classes. Um, and she, she, what she's saying is that uh, the Discovering Computer Science course, she's seeing that it is improving enrollment in her dual enrollment course, not only in the number and diversity of students who are taking that course, but how successful that they are. Um, she used to have a prerequisite for our dual enrollment course was Regents Level Geometry. Now the prerequisite is Discovering Computer Science or Regents level geometry. So if a student is taking this for third year math credit, who's not you know, on that Regents level math, and they're successful, she, they're welcome to come in and they are coming into the 110 class, which is really great. Um, quote from Murray, I've seen a major increase in success um, from students who have taken this class. Um, she also is offering our dual enrollment 120 course as well. And that's because she has students who are, are you know, growing her program here. Shalmont High School, Shalmont High School is another suburban high school. Um, not, not as many high needs students there. Um, but Casey is really interesting. Casey is uh, a, a middle school literacy teacher, actually, when she came to us. Um, and she's moved up into the high school. She actually teaches middle school and high school now. Um, but she started the computer science program at Shalmont through a partnership with us. Um, you know, her big lessons learned don't assume that students know everything, even if they've done some programming. In this course, in the Discovering course, the labs are still engaging. We, we set up the labs so that there's um, a continuum of learning. So there's sort of the foundational, fundamental stuff that students need to learn, and then we add challenges on um, toward, towards the ends of the labs. So to, teachers have the flexibility to differentiate instruction in the classroom here. Um, and since we cover such a wide variety of topics, there's always something new. Um, she said that her students really enjoy the labs and the fact that we work in three different languages. Um, she uh, is now offering our dual, our, our dual enrollment 110 class and her students have said um, that they're really glad that they took the discovering class because they felt like they were ready to take this college level course. She has seniors who are disappointed they can't take 110, but we tell them come to Siena College, we could take it with us. Um, and the majority of Discovering CS students who uh, at Shama also take the dual enrollment class, which is awesome. Casey's also piloting our web course this year. Um, just at Middletown, Middletown is a large urban school district, very high needs here. Um, she she is actually one of the teachers who uh, helped develop some of the curriculum in the course. Um, Jess was a middle school math teacher, uh, and we tapped her to, to move on up to the high school um, and come teach computer science with us. So she really is a master at using differentiating the material um, and motivating and rewarding student progress. Um, she's you know, sometimes in computing or when we have these labs and these projects, um, it's hard to to f learn at first how do you 
you know, how do you keep track of what's going on in the classroom here? So she's emphasizing that that's that you need a system to do that here. Um, the, the labs and the projects do span multiple class days. Um, so it is important uh, to help students um, adjust to doing that. Um, she also has students who are now moving up into the dual enrollment course. Um, she's seeing that those students are more confident and they actually have more buy-in compared to other students. And by that, she means buy-in to the importance of computer science. Um, and then, just give you a second to read that quote here. Um, so again, this foundational computer science course is helping students who wouldn't normally have taken a computer science class, not only to take this class, but to feel the confidence and belonging in taking um, upper level courses, right, college level courses. Okay. And they're offering now discovering CSIS 110 and 120. And I also should say that this year they're offering the discovering class um, to their eighth grade honor students as well. Uh, so this course is now reaching down into the middle school as well. Um, John at Greenwich is a, is a small, um, small school here. Um, he says the students in the DS class are spreading positivity about the course, which of course helps enrollment in the next class. Um, and the underclassmen in discovering CS are, he is seeing them take um, 110. It was a struggle at Greenwich to get a computer science program started in the first place. Um, but after a couple of years of offering discovering computer science, he's seeing enrollment grow here, which is really great. And then after I had all those out, um, Stephanie, who's a teacher at Schenectady High School, a very large um, urban school district, very, very high needs. Um, she took a look at the slideshow and she's had a couple things she wanted to add. So she's, she wanted to emphasize that um, this really helps students develop a growth mindset here. Um, and we really develop the curriculum to um, start kids off slowly and then help them as not only as the lab develops or as the unit develops, but as the whole entire course develops, right? To help them become more confident, more independent in what they're doing and to take ownership for their own learning here. Um, she, uh, emphasizes that pair programming helps with perseverance here. Um, and her words, right, I think uh, growth mindset and pair programming make this course amazing and hook people, which is really great to hear. Um, we have, over the last two years, we have uh, had a colleague of ours, uh, Dr. Jesse Moy in the education department. Um, he went into several different schools and he interviewed um, students who are taking the Discovering Computer Science course. Um, and he has um, compiled that qual uh, qualitative research here um, and come up with some key ideas here. So key ideas from the student perspective, early exposure to CS and proactive counseling and encouragement from educators are keys to getting underrepresented students into computer science. So we're seeing that um, students, uh, male students generally feel like they belong in computer science. Um, they're going to take a course regardless of, of who uh, is encouraging them or not encouraging them. But for our female and our underrepresented students, they really need somebody to reach out to them and say, you can do this, right? You belong here. Give it a try. We're going to help you. Um, even small experiences build confidence. So if you run an hour of code at your school, for example, um, you know, that can really help students start to feel like maybe a computer science class is for them. Um, I already talked about that. Students are engaged with the Discovering CS course content here. Um, in the interview, students were really enthusiastic about the culturally relevant assignments. So not necessarily the programming assignments, but the other assignments that allowed them to, um, to explore like what is their self-identity and how does that play out in computing? And also we do have many labs where students are um, learning a topic, but they're bringing in what's important to them. So for example, in the sound lab, um, students can, you know, they can uh, integrate music uh, that's relevant to their life and their culture. Um, and that actually plays out in 
both the block base unit and the web unit um, and a little bit in the Python unit here. Um, the discovering course initiated a sustained interest in computer science. So we're not saying that every student is going to become a computer scientist or every student is going to go on to be programming uh, a programmer, but every student should understand how computing works and how it affects their lives. And so we want we want to see that curiosity here. Um, learning useful skills and information, recognizing um, different paces are necessary for different uh, students. Um, and so we have to allow and adjust for students to be working at different paces in our classroom or at different levels in our classroom here. Um, relationships matter to most, but they're transformational for underrepresented individuals in the classroom. So building that teacher-student relationship is super important, um, but also developing the peer-to-peer -peer relationships in your classrooms here. Um, and helping your students learn how to collaborate and helping your students learn how to work together. Um, teachers need to minimize the salience of stereotype threat uh, and help students feel like they belong. And so we're, we build into the curriculum um, experiences to help students do that. The diversity project is one of those, for example, here. Um, and then the Discovering CS course provides positive experience Inequitable conditions in the CS field, though, can remain a barrier for careers in the future. So we're seeing students who um, are wanting to take the next course in computer science in their high school, but there's still some uncertainty about once I leave high school, like what is it going to be like in college? What is it going to be like in the workplace? And so that's an area of future growth for us. Um, and then, you know, the big thing here, um, you, earlier in the presentation, we said that, you know, the, the first few years we were focusing on aqua, access to computer science um, and finding a teacher in a high school who is willing to teach the class. Um, but what we're really seeing and what our next grant proposal is about is the fact that um, in order to truly grow computing in a high school, it, t it takes more than one teacher recruiting or one or two teachers recruiting. We need administrative support. We need support from guidance. Um, and it really is going to take the whole school community in order to be able to engage all students in computing. And so that's what we're focusing on next. Um, and for a district perspective, then, why is this so important? Um, you know, computer science is, is uh, a 21st century skill, right? It's not just about digital literacy or carrying your phone around on being able to interact with that or being able to create a presentation. It's really about understanding how this is affecting your life here. Um, it goes, it, what you learn in computer science classroom goes into other classrooms. So you're teaching logical reasoning, critical thinking, problem solving. And students who can create technology, right, are creators of technology, um, have more power, right, than being just a, a excuse me, a consumer of technology here. Um, and, you know, this idea you must be represented to be heard, right? There's a lot of cases in, in computing, um, and there's a lot in the news about computing and bias in computing here, because our computing uh, society right now is, is really dominated by one or two, two groups of individuals here. The more people that we bring into that, um, the more diverse of a workforce we have in computing, the more people's voices can be heard, right? Um, this is from code.org, um, their, their website here. There are six different studies that show that in computer science, uh, students who take computer science perform better in other subjects, excel more at problem solving, and are 17% more likely to attend college, right? That's what we want, we want for our students. Um, growth here. And then, of course, the jobs, right? Uh, there are 4.7 million U.S. computing uh, computer-related jobs opening by 2030. This is from NCWIT. 20% of those jobs are only are going to be filled by U.S. computing bachelor's degrees. That means we have 80% of those jobs where we don't have people to put in those seats, right? Um, again, from code.org on the right here, New York has th over 30,000 open computing jobs. 
Now, as we heard this morning, only 50% of high schools in New York are teaching a foundational computer science class here. Um, and so we have, we have a lot of room to grow, not just as a New York state, but as a country as well here. And so we want, you know, we want our students when they're graduating, right, to be able to engage in fields that are going to help support them and sustain them um, throughout their lives here. So CS for All challenges, developing the teacher pipeline is a big challenge here. Um, something that we saw in our grants over the last 10 years is that idea of teacher confidence, um, being able to find somebody who's willing to step out of their um, normal background and training and to try something new um, and to be able to learn it alongside their students. Um, and, uh, you know, we are providing for them ongoing professional development. So I, I mentioned for discovering computer science that we have the four day August um, PD, but we also uh, offer professional development throughout the year. So we meet online um, as a professional learning community uh, about roughly twice a month here. And then we have a couple of Saturday PD sessions um, when new units come up to help support them. Teachers need, if they're learning how to teach computer science, um, and actually computer science itself, that's a big load here. Um, and so we need to support them. Um, we need support from administration. We need buy-in from our districts here. And then these next three things, this is a quote from um, Norval Connell at Middletown High School, um, where their program has grown tremendously over the last four years from 10 students to now over 900 students enrolled. Um, administrators and dis the district need to build a foundation for growth. They need to find the right teachers. They need to market their program. Um, and of course, we have that we have that hurdle like how do you fit computer science into an already packed schedule? Um, and so those these are things that we're we're focusing on here. And then we also need um, to be able to run our our programs. So we need districts to approve software and find ways to to work with teachers on that and we need to integrate the state standards here so again leanne said uh this this morning in the keynote speech here uh 50 of high schools are offering foundational computer science but only 3.4 percent of new york students are enrolled um, so we really we really need to address this so if you'd like to come and join us these are our school partners that we're working with right now in all of our four courses. The ones that are highlighted in yellow are the ones that um, are offering Discovering Computer Science right now. And then Duanesburg in green is coming on in the next month or so. We have another teacher who's gonna be joining us. And then Berlin and Sharon Springs have um, expressed interest in joining us. Um, we provide professional development, full curriculum, um, tuition waivers, we've talked about those things. Um, our professional learning community, not only is it the teachers who are teaching with us, but we offer also the uh, connection to CSTA. Um, we host the Capital District Region Chapter at Siena College. Um, we have an annual programming contest that we offer to over, um, last year we had over 300 participants um, in the contest, and I believe that was our 34th annual, so we're gonna do that again um, in March this year. Um, and, you know, how can you partner with us? Um, we are welcome everybody here, um, teachers. We're looking for teachers who are enthusiastic, who enjoy problem solving, who are willing to learn alongside their students. And do you have to know anything about computer science? No, you do not. And you can be, and you will be successful here. So if you're interested in learning more about discovering computer science or um, connecting with us about our, any of our dual enrollment, um, classes, you can reach out to us. Um, I'm down there in the bottom left corner. That's uh, me, Pauline White. Um, Robin Flatland and Jim Matthews are the co-principal investigators for um, the grant that we currently have here um, and, and moving forward. Um, and again, if you'd like to leave any information on the Jamboard, um, questions or anything uh, that you have you want me to reach out to you about you're welcome to do that as well so i'll open it up we i think we just have like a minute or two 
But if you have questions, you're welcome to type them in the chat. Um, and otherwise, I hope to see you in the future and enjoy the conference. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> Um, teacher certification classes, yes. So teacher, oh, hi, Norval. Um, teacher certification classes, yes. So um, we are, so Siena College was the first college to be approved for um, undergraduate, so pre-service teacher certification in computer science. Um, and right now we are working with our education department and state ed to have a um, teaching certificate for um, in-service teachers approved because right now um, we know that the you can eventually soon hopefully you'll be able to apply through individual um, evaluation of experience in order to become CS certified here but the state has not uh, been willing to tell us which of our courses are um, going to count towards the 12 credits that you need um, so we are pursuing a um, certificate program so that if you go through the certificate program, you'll, you will for sure um, be certified as CS uh, education when you apply to the state. In the meantime, um, there are three courses at uh, our college that we know are going to be part of the program. Um, and so there are our 110 dual enrollment class. Um, that's the Python multimedia class. Um, and then the 110. 20 Java class. That's the one that's akin to AP Computer Science A. Um, and then our web class. Those three classes we're offering, um, we offer those in the evenings. And uh, right now you can take them for free tuition. So our, the Siena College has said that um, as long as there's a seat open in the classroom, high school teachers can take those classes for free. Um, so if you are teaching with us, and you are interested in taking classes, you just let us know. Um, we offer right now, for example, the 110 class is being offered at 4.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You join remotely through there. Um, and then uh, there's a special lab session. And then in the spring, we'll offer our 120 class here. Um, so we have the three classes are um, our 110 Python class, our 120 is a Java class, and then 180 is our web design class. Those are the three classes that we are offering right now for teachers to take for free. You're welcome. Okay, I think... If we're running on time, I think the next session is going to start. We have about a 15 minute break and the next session will start at 1040. Um, you're welcome, Chris. Um, and you're <laughs> thank you, Robin. Um, the next session will start at 10, about 1040. I'll hang out here for a little bit longer. If you have more questions, I'd be happy to to, uh, to answer those for you here. Otherwise, I hope that I see you in the conference um, a little bit later. <laughs>